Hey guys, welcome back. Let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. Today we're talking mammals, and that's all we're talking, and then it's a chapter. So, mammals, the milk makers, they give us all kind of cool little names for each ones, I guess. Uh, but there you go. Uh, mammals, there's, there's a lot of things make a mammal a mammal. Uh, number one, females produce milk to nourish their offspring. Uh, two, mammals are going to have hair or fur. Uh, some of them don't have a lot of hair, like for example, whales and dolphins pretty much lost the hair um, but they're gonna have a few little bristles around their nose so we count it uh, but they should have hair for the hair is made of keratin it's a good insulator keeps you warm uh, we're endotherms that's why we need the hair uh, we have four chambered heart it is very very efficient we're gonna start to see really large skulls and really large brains for our body size especially in comparison to other vertebrates uh, a lower jaw is gonna consist of just one single bone the mandible and we're going to have four different types of teeth present in a lot of our mammals. Those are the incisors, the canines, the premolars, and the molars, which indicates that mammals are capable of, or at least at one time were capable of, a varied diet. Because the canine teeth rip meat, incisors cut, molars grind vegetation. You can tell a little bit about an animal from its teeth, and this certainly indicates that we... Uh, aren't necessarily specialists on one type of thing, but rather uh, we are kind of generalists in our uh, teeth design. We can eat a lot of different things. So when we look at mammals coming up in the fossil record, there's kind of two branches that split from amniotes. One is the branch that's going to have your amniote, uh, your offspring be in an egg of some sort. That's going to be reptiles and birds. The other branch is going to keep that egg in the body, develop the embryo in the body, and then give life birth, and that's going to be our mammals. So before we had mammals, true mammals, we had like therapsids, and therapsids were a long, long time ago, the dominant creature on land by the end of the Permian, and the Permian was a rough time to be around because we had the Permian extinction, and the Permian extinction um, 250 million years ago or so is 70% of land species, probably 95% of ocean species, Everything just dies, and so did our therapsids. We're not really sure what therapsids looked like, but based on the fossils, you know, it might have looked like this, kind of like a weird dog that's not quite a dinosaur, but not quite a true mammal, but definitely not an amphibian, or maybe like this, or, or, <laughs> or maybe like this, but it's okay that that guy went extinct. He looks kind of depressing. Even his face. Look at him, he just looks sad. Anyways, that's Therapsid. So, um, some animals survived the extinction, not a lot, but one of them they did was a Cynodont. And the Cynodont survived that extinction event, and they went on to grow a little more insulating fur, a little more hair, and they're going to give rise to the mammals that we're going to see during the Jurassic period. Now, of those that started to diversify, we really have three surviving lineages that are split up. We have the Monotremes, and those are mammals that lay eggs. We have marsupials, those are mammals that carry their young in a pouch. And then we have placental mammals, which is a mammal that keeps the embryo inside the uterus and nourishes it with a placenta, and, uh, and the embryo just takes nutrition and oxygen from the mother's bloodstream. And so here's what cynodonts might have looked like. The thing with just having a fossil is what you want to do with hide and skin is really up to you. So we have the fossil. We know they were like maybe the size of like cats, maybe a little bigger, and uh, that they survived that extinction. So here's one interpretation of what they might look like. Here's another one with a little cooler fur coat. And uh, here's another one where they, they got a like tiger stripe on them and they killed a thing. So why not? Sure, that's fine. Uh, one thing we do know, they do have some pretty decent teeth pretty long teeth, and uh, that they were pretty close to what we would consider a mammal today. So here's your mammalian diversity. Um, monotremes. Monotremes, there's not a ton of species. Really, there's about five, and four of those species are echidnas, and the last is the platypus. Um, monotremes are weird because they lay eggs. And, like, what the heck, man? Mammals aren't supposed to lay eggs, uh, but monotremes lay eggs, and they're cool. Uh, this is an echidna, which is like a, 
of an anteater who's pokey all over his back, lives in logs, and he's just kind of super cute, too. And uh, then there's the platypus, which you guys know what a platypus looks like, but that thing's stinking weird. Like, swimming, getting food from the water, sensing electricity with its bill, hollow, bony spikes that it can stab you with when it kicks you and the males have venom in them when they kick you they can inject a venom with their ankle bone spike fang thing platypi are weird or platypuses i don't know how you say it i like platypi they're weird they're a weird weird animal anyways uh marsupials uh marsupials don't lay eggs thank goodness we get to something a little easier to understand i guess there's about 300 species living in australia and some of the surrounding islands examples of some common marsupials that you'll know of are kangaroos because they have pouches uh koalas and tasmanian devils used to be a tasmanian tiger but that's extinct now um, there's a hundred species living in central and south america of marsupials and then we only have the north american opossum that's our only marsupial the the stinky weird toad opossum that's our marsupial so here's the echidna just a weird animal and then here's the platypus even weirder with its two platypi babies that are all curled up on its belly and it's holding them with its weird little hands so platypus weird creature uh, here's a kangaroo and it's got the uh, little joey in the pouch there and there's the north american possum gross with all of its babies, they're so weird. And there you go. So, um, placental mammals. So an animal um, that's going to have its young nourished by a placenta, that's going to be 5,000 species. They're the dominant mammal in our land habitats. And the only mammals that live in seas, 40% uh, of those are rodents. So that's gross. That's almost half, <laughs> almost half of these guys are rodents. And, and they're going to have specialized teeth that grow throughout their life for gnawing. And so rodents aren't all necessarily small. There's some big ones like, you know, beavers and that kind of stuff. But a lot of them, you know, mice and voles, stuff you're familiar with. Uh, there's bats. Those are the only mammals that are capable of any sort of sustained flight. Uh, there's 1,200 species of bats. And then there's moles and shrews that are going to spend pretty much their whole life underground burrowing. And so there's your, your whole uh, idea of all these different orders. Um, we have mice, squirrels, and porcupines are rodents. Um, we have Chiroptera, which are bats. And then we have Carnivora, which is dogs, cats, bears, weasels, seals, walruses, things that only eat meat. Then we have moles and shrews are in order. We have our cetaceans, which are dolphins and whales, ocean mammals. And we have uh, arteriodactyly, which are even-toed mammals like deer, cattle, goats, pigs, and hippos. Uh, you know, eating just vegetation. We have versodactyla, which are odd-toed mammals like horses, zebras, and rhinos. And then we have primates, which are lemurs, monkeys, apes, and humans. Cool. So there's your there's your groups. Whales and dolphins are adapted to life at sea. No kidding, right? Carnivora, dogs, cats, bats, bears. Sorry, not bats. I'm reading too quick. Bears, wolves, foxes, weasels, predators, you know. Cetaceans are big mammalian grazers. And then our primates, including humans. And we're going to spend a lot of time talking primates in our next chapter. So, uh, points to ponder. Are all chordates vertebrates? And are all vertebrates chordates? That's a really good question. Uh, were dinosaurs more similar to birds or reptiles? Kind of a tough one. And why is it necessary for amphibians to produce a very large amount of eggs? All good questions. As always, 